What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about the dumbbell pullover, a popular exercise for training both the lats and pecs in isolation. In this video, we're going to talk about a how-to, we're going to talk about the muscles working with this exercise, some variations and some mistakes to avoid, but now let's dive into the how-to. Step one of the pullover is to lie flat on a bench. Now you can perform these with the upper back on the bench and the hips extended. It's a matter of personal preference. Personally, I like using the flat bench because then I can keep my hips grounded and pay more attention to my overhead extension. However, you can perform them again with the upper back on the bench and the hips extended. Step two, grip the head of the dumbbell so that your L's on the hand, so your pointer finger and your thumb and that crevice are on the outskirts of that dumbbell head. So pretty much as if you were trying to like, let's say, make a field goal with your hands above your head. Extend that dumbbell over the chest, get your positioning and create a nice soft elbow posture. As a rule of thumb, generally going to about where the head is or just past it is a good bet for many folks. Before you bring that dumbbell up though, Think about leading with the elbows. It's not just lifting the dumbbell up and pulling it, it's the elbows are then contracting it. So that's gonna give you a little bit more of a lat activation and help those pecs engage. So then you're gonna contract, 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 bring that dumbbell back over the chest, and then you are ready to repeat your next rep. All right, so two mistakes to avoid with this exercise. Number one, forcing range of motion that isn't there. If you have trouble getting overhead and either the barbell overhead press or even just extending the arms over the head, then you may want to reach for a different exercise or work on that mobility before imploring something that's going to put load on an unstable or compromised position due to your limited mobility. The second mistake is for the folks that lie with their hips off the bench and use them as a counterbalance. Try to keep them into a more extended position as opposed to letting them sink all the way to the ground because that can put the lumbar into a more stressed position. If you're accounting for that, that's a different story. But for most folks, it's gonna be a little bit more of a safer bet to perform with the hips higher. The main muscle groups that are gonna be targeted with the pullover will be the pec major, lats, and serratus anterior. The pec major is gonna serve in the eccentric and concentric movement patterns. The lats will be most active when you're fully extended over the head. So really trying to stabilize and then start to pull that weight over, whether it be a dumbbell, plate, or barbell. And then the serratus anterior is gonna to serve to stabilize the scapula throughout the full movement. And that's the boxer muscle, so that rib-like muscle that sits under the armpit. There are multiple ways you can perform the pullover. Most commonly is the dumbbell pullover, and that's what we discussed in our how-to. You can also use kettlebells, plates, barbells, the list goes on. Whatever you can hold in your hands, you could technically do a pullover with. Anytime you notice the hip shooting up or pain or impingement in the shoulder, then it might be worth exploring a different implement and not just opting for one, thinking you can only do one to achieve the benefits of this exercise. And that wraps up our pullover guide video. As always, if you want to read the full article on this movement, check out the full read down there in the description below.